23 years of experience treating spine injuries. Today we're going to be talking about artificial discs in the neck and the back. Artificial discs have been promoted and used now around the world for over 20 years. Some of the data that's starting to come in on artificial discs shows that there are complications related to artificial discs. I believe the complication rate is unacceptably high. Therefore, at Duke Spine Institute currently in the year 2020, we don't recommend and we don't typically do artificial disc surgery. However, I've been trained to do artificial disc surgery and artificial discs are becoming more and more popular as an option for many patients to consider when they have a herniated disc that needs to be repaired or treated and they are an alternative to spinal fusion. At the end of this discussion, you'll see that there is a newer surgery that's available that is endoscopic spine surgery done through a tiny tube where there is no fusion and there is no artificial disc used. It's a natural repair of a herniated disc and the procedure is called the Duke Laser Disc Repair. The Duke Laser Disc Repair is a peer reviewed and published surgery. It's all FDA approved and the surgery has been performed here at Duke Spine Institute now for 15 years. We've had zero complications with the Duke Laser Disc Repair. Now we'll contrast that to the complications we're going to learn about today in a newly published paper out of the Spine Journal that talks about complications from artificial discs. I have here with me Sean, who is going to be assisting me as we move through these slides. Hopefully you can hear my voice. The last time we tried one of these, uh, we had problems with the sound. All right, so just for discussion and for understanding, what you're seeing here is an artificial disc. This is in the bottom of your slide on your monitor. And what you can see from this structure is that this is what's implanted, this entire device. And the device is a biomechanical device implanted into the spine. And there are artificial discs made for the neck area, which we call the cervical spine, there are artificial discs made for the lumbar spine. And the design is different. The basic design components are the same, but there are also different manufacturers of artificial discs, and there are different types of artificial discs that could be used. Some of the earlier artificial discs are metal. More modern or more contemporary artificial discs usually include a combination or hybrid of metal and plastic very durable plastic. One of the problems with any type of a artificial joint is something called wear fragments. Wear fragments are pieces of material at the mobile surface of the artificial joint that basically get scratched off over time. So when you have a metal on metal joint and the wear fragments will be metal, pieces of metal, because the interface is metal to metal. When you have a plastic to plastic interface, your wear fragments will be plastic. And the designers of these artificial discs have taken into account the fact that different biomaterials like metals versus plastics, they wear at different rates and they create different wear patterns and wear fragments. As with any artificial joint, it's important that the artificial joint is inserted into the joint space correctly so that proper alignment of the bones, meaning the relative positions of the bones with respect to each other across a joint, is preserved, and that otherwise the patient that has an artificial joint placed that doesn't preserve alignment can end up having a tilt to one side or the other, or they could wear down the joint very quickly on one side of the artificial joint versus the other. And that could create problems with loosening of the joint <clears throat> and the need for revision surgery. So what you're seeing here in the middle is an x-ray of the lumbar spine and this part of the picture is bones or vertebrae and you can clearly see that there's something different here. This is an artificial disc. As a matter of fact, this disc right here is most likely this artificial disc. And this is the L5-S1 disc space. So this is an artificial L5-S1 disc. All of the artificial discs that are placed in the lumbar spine have to be placed through the front. 
which means the surgeon's going to go through your belly area. And surgery through the belly area to me is very risky. Uh, it has the highest chance of complications. So artificial discs in the lumbar spine, patients have to take into consideration the fact that the approach, the approach is how the surgeon goes from the outside world to the spine. The approach is through the front. And approaches to the lumbar spine through the belly or through the front are the highest risk of complications. You can see over here on the last picture, this is a side view of that same artificial disc looking through the side. You can actually see a metal ring and then the rest is gonna be plastic, which doesn't show up on the X-ray. That's the L5 bone and this is the sacrum right here. So this is an L5 S1 artificial disc. And this disc is in very good position. You can see, let's just take a moment to look at this. On the side view, you can see that the front of the artificial disc, which is this point right here on this white thing, is actually right at the front of the spine. And okay, it lines up with the rest of the spine. Here is a normal disc at L4-5. This is the disc above the artificial disc. So I presume this patient had an artificial disc placed here at L5-S1 because their L5-S1 disc was damaged. And you can see what the normal disc looks like. You can't even see it on x-rays. So the L5-S1 disc, uh, artificial disc, looks like it's touching against the end plates nicely. So it's hugging the bottom of the bone here, and it's hugging the top of the S1 bone here. It seems to be in good alignment with the front of the spine, and it's in good alignment with the back. And also the foramen where the nerve root comes out is well preserved. It's got good um, diameter or caliber. All right, we're going to go to the next slide. So as I said, just, just this week, I believe, in the Spine Journal, they published uh, 1,347 complications with implanted artificial discs. These are all FDA-approved artificial discs. In the United States of America, you can only implant an FDA-approved device. So these are all FDA-approved, and this is specific to the cervical spine. So what I showed you earlier was the lumbar spine. We're going to look at the cervical spine as well. So these are 1,347 problems with artificial discs that were put into the cervical spine. This does not include the lumbar spine. And by far, there are more lumbar spine artificial discs than there are cervical. So we're going to talk about the seven most common, common complications that were identified through this study. Okay, This is a groundbreaking study. And... The first and most important complication is implant migration. 25% of the complications that were reported for cervical discs out of that 1,347 complications, 25% of them are what are called implant migration. Now, if you look here, okay, what you see is that the back of the bone is here. This is the vertebral body we looked at earlier. And this is the part of the artificial disc that sits on top of the vertebrae within the disc base. And the back here, the back of this implant or the bottom plate, is supposed to be back here. But it is slipped forward. You can actually see the tooth that's supposed to be sitting inside the bone anchoring it. It's called an anchor. That has migrated along with the bottom right on out. Okay? So implant migration, most common complication that has been reported related to cervical um, artificial discs, okay? And by the way, here's another artificial disc, a different manufacturer, and it has a different anchor. This one is a, a keel. We call it a keel. And you can see all these anchors that have different designs. This is part of their patent process. They patent these specific designs unique to their product, okay? But what do you see over here? This is important. Look right here. That's actually that plastic insert that was supposed to be inside. If you look at the other picture, you can see it here. That's a marker. It's called a tantalum marker. It's a little metal marker inside the insert. So the insert has popped out completely in this spine. All right. The second most common complications occurred with what's called insertional failure. And that happened in 20, about 25% of the patients as well. So that means the surgeon was trying to put the implant in and failed. Either they fractured the bone or the implant uh, didn't fit properly. So they had some type of a problem inserting the actual artificial disc into the space. So insertion failures are the second most common cause. Okay? 
Now, the third most common complication was post-operative neck pain. So these are patients who had pain in their neck after the surgery that they didn't have before. And that occurred in 15% of the patients. The fourth most common complication from artificial discs that were put into the neck is called heterotopic ossification. This happened in about 8% of the patients. Heterotopic means that uh, something is happening away from where it's supposed to. Okay, Topic is the location. Hetero means different. And ossification means calcium deposit. So what's happening here, folks, uh, and this is an example here of heterotopic ossification. This is not an artificial disc case, but I just found this as a good illustrative point. This is all bone, the white stuff. All right, and if you look at it on this picture here, this is all bone. And all this bone has formed um, as a result of placing an artificial disc. Now, not in this particular case, because we didn't have a good picture to show you, but we wanted to show you just what heterotopic ossification could be. It means calcium deposits that are forming around the implant. And again, I used a fusion patient picture of a CAT scan uh, to show you that. The fifth most common complication is radiculopathy. So this is basically a pinched nerve after the surgery. And 8% of the patients had a pinched nerve. We all know what pinched nerves do. It can send pain shooting down your arm, numbness in your hand, weakness in the hand. Okay. So this slide comes from data that was presented in the Spine Journal, which is the, uh, the journal where this article was published that we took this data from. And it said, here's the major flaw for each device. So Mobix C is just one type of artificial disc, okay? And C stands for cervical. Pro disc is another C for cervical. Bryant C disc. These are all different manufactured models of disc made by different companies. So the most common problem with the Mobix C was insertional failure, failure to insert. Um, what I can tell you is most of these, the surgeon is going to go in there, try to insert the disc and go, oh, can't do it. Uh, it's not working right. And they convert the surgery to a fusion. The most common complication with the pro C was implant migration. That's where it kind of pops out. Okay. So if you're somebody considering having an artificial disc done because you have a herniated disc in your neck, you don't want to have a fusion. You're considering artificial disc because you want to keep the movement between those two bones. You don't want to fuse the bones so they don't move anymore. Really the best surgery in the world for your problem is going to be a Duke laser disc repair. What is the Duke laser disc repair? Well, it is a surgery done through a tiny, tiny incision. As a matter of fact, four millimeters, which is almost nothing. And we put a little metal tube in from the outside world into the disc that's herniated. And through that tiny tube, we're able to bring an endoscope and a laser, and I can repair the herniation using the laser and the endoscope. Here's a picture of what it looks like in the operating room. The Duke laser disc repair is peer-reviewed and published. It's not experimental. It has known outcomes. And the success rate is around 95% elimination of neck pain, pain from the neck into the arms, headaches associated with neck pain, and any other ridiculous symptoms such as weakness, numbness, or tingling. And again, zero complications in over 1,000 surgeries. Just to give you an idea of what it looks like, this is an x-ray of the cervical spine. And here is the tube right here. It's coming in from the left side. And basically, I use a grabbers, little pituitary grabbers, and I use a laser to remove the herniation, which you can kind of see outlined right here. Okay? And all this is done without fusion and without any metal implants at all. It's direct visualization. I can see the herniation. I can see the tear. And I use a laser to repair everything. All right. So what's the takeaway? Artificial discs are being implanted more and more commonly in the cervical spine. And we know that there are complications that occur. We reviewed those complications today. And at this point, we'll take questions from the audience. Sean, do we have any questions? None so far. All right, no questions. So I hope you enjoyed this talk, and we're going to be doing these every week.
If you have questions on the topic, please feel free to type your question in the question box. You can do that in advance of the talk so we have the questions ready to go with prepared answers. Have a nice day.